This is the demilitarized zone in Korea. It's one of the most fortified borders in the world. It divides one country into two nations at war. Tensions are high. Tensions mount on the Korean Peninsula. This border is the result of the Korean War, which has divided one people with thousands of years of common history into two different identities, two different ideologies. Dozens of South Koreans are in North Korea this week, reuniting with family members they've been separated from since the Korean War. But more than 70 years later, we shouldn't forget that the reason why this division became permanent and the reason why the two countries still can't reconcile lies in their interests and the fears of a country an ocean away. Korea has a long history of occupation. At the beginning of the 20th century, Korea was annexed by the Japanese Empire, whose goal was to dominate all of Asia. During the occupation, the national identity of the Korean people was almost wiped out. The Japanese pressured them to use Japanese names and criminalized the Korean language. The former king of Korea lives on the bounty of his Japanese masters. The streets of Seoul illustrates how thoroughly the Japanese are assimilating Korea. The Koreans lost control of their language, their culture, their land, and even their bodies. Thousands of Korean women were deported to Japan as sex slaves. And thousands of people died in protests for independence. Many Korean nationalists fled the country and founded the Korean government in exile in Shanghai, China, where they asked for help from the US President Wilson. But although Wilson was famous for his ideas against colonialism, he ignored the Koreans' requests. Meanwhile, many Korean communists fought the Japanese in Manchuria. One of them, the Yang Kim Seung Ju, distinguished himself at their command. He would later be known as Kim Il Sang, which was his battle name. The Japanese occupation ended after World War II. Although the Imperial Army had already been defeated in the Pacific, the United States bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. By using nuclear weapons, the United States preventively declared that they had the power and the will to stop the growing expansion of communism by any means necessary. We are united in detesting communist slavery no matter what the cost. Meanwhile, the Red Army and the Korean resistance forced the Japanese to surrender in Korea. The American military later landed in the south of the peninsula. After 40 years of Japanese domination, Korea makes a start on the road back to national independence. The two winning superpowers made an agreement. They will make a temporary division of Korea and will leave after forming an independent and democratic Korean government. But we all know the actual end of the story. The North established a provisional government supervised by the Soviets. Kim Il-sung, from the Communist Party, became Prime Minister. Workers and farmers all over the country formed popular assemblies which allowed them to participate in the preparation of economic and social reforms, such as redistribution of land, nationalization of industries, compulsory education, equality for women, and an eight-hour working day. Southern Korea has gone on the path of economic growth. They have dimmed the troubles of large-scale new factories. The South Korean people went through a quite different situation. Sing Ri was chosen as the head of the provisional government. He was an anti-communist, backed by the US military and the CIA. Нищета, безработица, детская беспризорность стали бытовым явлением. From industrial northern Korea, agitators infiltrated to spread communism. 
ideas which only too easily took root among the 20 million inhabitants of southern Korea, most of them peasants. The commander of the American troops, Hodge, told his soldiers that the Koreans were to be treated as defeated enemies, like the Japanese. Over four years of occupation, the American military has killed over 36,000 South Koreans. American and German regime has filled the fire and filled the chaos of people's suffering. In various places, South Korea is suddenly struck by a war of destruction. Nationalist forces, regarded with favor by China's Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek and the American State Department, clash with Korean communist elements who look to Soviet Russia for approval. And Sigma Rhee's so-called death squads got rid of politicians who were inconvenient to the Americans. Kim Koo, an old colleague of Sigma Rhee, was killed for being too soft with communists. Two opposing systems were emerging in Korea against the backdrop of the Cold War. President Truman saw South Korea as an essential outpost against communism. For months, the United States sabotaged North Korean and Soviet proposals for joint elections. Soviet President General Stikov reminded the importance of the international agreement to create a single, democratic and independent Korea. But on the American side, in 1948, the United States held separate elections and proclaimed the Republic of Korea, making the division of the peninsula permanent. The one-sided outcome in the vice presidential contest points to clear-cut support for Ri. Лисельмановцы по указке американского командования провели в Южной Корее фальшивые выборы. Были применены испытанные американские выборные методы – насилие, террор, солдатский штык, доллары для предателей и тюрьма для патриотов. The North responded with the proclamation of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Meanwhile, the Soviet troops left the country, following the initial agreement. At this point, the only option left for unification was war both sides were ready to retake the country by force. В эти дни подготовка американцев к войне выразилась в том, что они усиленно слали из Вашингтона в Южную Корею многочисленные миссии. Сенаторы, дипломаты, генералы, разведчики прилетали в Южную Корею под самыми разнообразными предлогами. Usually, we have this idea of two halves of the Korean people fighting against each other. But the reality is that after the Japanese colonization, Communism was very popular all over Korea. The United States knew this and weren't sure if they would be able to maintain their influence on a united, democratic Korea, especially after the communists took power in China in 1949. The People's Republic of China, the world's most populous country, was proclaimed a communist state. According to North Koreans, the South was still in a colonial state. There were no reforms and the workers were repressed. The US Army even recruited pro-Japanese collaborators to serve in the police force and the government. Many South Koreans probably thought the same. Once the war began, very few citizens of Seoul fled the city to escape the northern occupation. Instead, they greeted the communists with joy. In the United States, the Korean War is called the Forgotten War, because it received very little media coverage. Even today, many people are totally unaware of the dynamics of this conflict. Fuck you, Kim Jong, whoever the fuck you are. The United States Army dropped more bombs on North Korea than in the whole war against Japan. And General MacArthur even considered using nuclear weapons again. 900 
tons of bombs rain down on a 20 square mile area before the bombardier signals mission accomplished. Американские агрессоры предприняли массовые варварские воздушные бомбардировки мирных корейских городов и селений, превращая больницы, школы и жилые дома в пепел и руины. American soldiers carried out mass executions of civilians from both North and South, like in the Nogunri massacre, in which hundreds of South Korean refugees were slaughtered and thrown into mass graves. It is at the front that the cost of freedom is being paid. The North Korean army only managed to resist thanks to the essential help of China, which sent over 200,000 volunteers. This tragedy claimed the lives of nearly 3 million Korean civilians. The war left behind a devastated country, especially the North. Pyongyang was almost completely destroyed. General MacArthur reports, the enemy has had his great chance. We are now in Korea in force, and we are here to stay. A truce was signed in 1953 between a Korean man and an American. Korea returned to the starting point, with the communists in the north and the pro-Americans in the south. An actual peace treaty was never signed, and North Korea is still formally at war with both the United States and South Korea. The South Korean and the US armies have been carrying out joint military drills as the tensions mount on the Korean peninsula. The Americans never left and they still have thousands of troops on the peninsula. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. 